Welcome everybody to this edition of uh, X Live. My name's David Cunningham. I'll be your host uh, for this uh, webinar. I'm here in uh, Paris at X Blue HQ, and we'll be joined shortly by a colleague of mine to uh, to discuss the CPIX um, sonar system we're going to look at today. So the idea of the webinar is to come to you live and direct with some news of uh, new products and uh, new innovations from from X Blue in the absence of. Uh, the opportunity to meet at trade shows around the world. So the, the format will be um, around a, about a 10 or 15 minute uh, discussion or presentation about the product itself, followed by a, um, a question and answer session. Um, so please um, post your questions that, uh, that may come up during the course of the uh, presentation on, on the webinar platform. There's, a, there's a, an area on the right hand side where you can just post your question. So we will answer all your questions. Um, after the event, we will post um, a recording of this webinar on our website, along with, a, let's say, an FAQ uh, a document covering all the, answer, the questions and answers that have been raised in, in this webinar, and also the, the one that we'll do later in, in the day at 5 p.m. French time. So that's enough of the uh, admin. So I'll, I'll introduce you now to uh, my colleague, Maxence Riaublanc, um, who's based down at our sonar um, factory uh, in La Ciotte in the south of France. Welcome, Maxence. Good morning, David, and hello to everybody uh, attending this uh, webinar. I'm very pleased to be there with you today. Great. So Maxence, is, um, he's the product manager, as I say, for the CPIX um, product lines. And maybe, Maxence, you could start by just introducing CPIX. Yeah, I think it's a good uh, starting point. Uh, the CPIX is one of our main products in uh, La Ciotte factory. So it has been designed for the fishery markets, and we already delivered uh, hundreds of them uh, worldwide, even in very uh, remote areas like uh, Alaska, uh, Falkland Islands, uh, Greenland, all this place where you can find a big spot of uh, fishes. So uh, it was designed for installation, uh, permanent installation on board vessels. So you can see it's just on your left, uh, David. It looks like uh, this is a real one here. So it's quite uh, massive to be uh, robust, and uh, it's a ruggedized uh, to face all the situation with the, the fishery vessel. So what is important with this uh, product, which is quite unique, it's a 3D multi-beam sonder, And that means in this one, you have like two multi-beam in only one unit. Uh, the yellow line, uh, the black line you can see is uh, actually the antennas. So both of them can transmit and can receive. So it makes uh, this product very unique. And this is a, what you call a solid state multi-beam echo sonder. So we can illustrate with this uh, uh, animation here. So uh, you can see two blue uh, moving parts in this animation. We call it a swath. Uh, this is actually the acoustic pattern that we can create with a CPIX. So we can steer with one antenna or the other an acoustic beam uh, into the volume, which is 120 per 130 degree. And from this swath, we can build uh, bathymetry, we can measure the backscatter value, uh, we can monitor the water column. So you can imagine for the fishery vessel that they want to spot the interesting uh, fish uh, schools. Uh, they also want to see the uh, environment which is around these fishes because maybe they are bottom trolling, so they need to adapt the net uh, above the, the seabed. And uh, they, something also interesting, this is a, a metrology tool. So it's not only about detect, detecting or getting a signal, but the signal we receive is calibrated uh, at our factory. So we can give a good assessment of uh, the biomass and also the nature of the, the sediments here. Okay, so, so in a nutshell, CPIX is, a, is an established product. It's uh, been developed originally in the, for the fisheries uh, market. Um, it's a 3D multi-beam um, with, uh, with, 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 with two swaths which scan uh, 120 by 120 degree cone. Um, it, there's hundreds in the field um, in, the, in this uh, main application in, in, in the fisheries um, domain. So now maybe you can just uh, explain a little bit now here, we're talking about CPIX-C. 
um, the construction uh, variant of this product. Maybe just explain a little bit the reasons why we've developed this this product. Yeah, I know uh, at Lasseta we we don't deal only with fact with fishery uh, industry, but also with uh, ocean science. So we meet uh, a lot of customer with very uh, challenging uh, application. And we discussing with them, we thought that oh maybe the CPIX could uh, answer this. So it's why we created the CPIX C. C stands for construction, but you can imagine it's a little bit wider than only construction. Uh, something very interesting and important here is that we have an existing hardware, which is the one we deliver on the fishery uh, industry. So it's exactly the same hardware, the same antenna, and also the same software, basic software to control the units. So uh, it's not really a new product. This is uh, a shift from this product to other applications. So we develop specific application to answer the challenges of our customer, but we keep the reliable, the robust, the C proven design uh, that we manufacture for years uh, now. Um, another point is we want and we try to make it uh, an easy to use uh, tool. So uh, you can imagine with fishermen, they only touch two buttons, that's it. So they don't want to tune or to set the system depending on the uh, condition. So that's something we keep in mind with, uh, with this product and we don't want to have skilled uh, people or surveyor on board to use the system. And the last point is uh, it was designed for a permanent installation, but we also have a light version for uh, on the fly um, a demonstration or uh, measurement. Okay, so, so it's, an, it's an evolution of the existing uh, system. The hardware remains the same, except that we have an additional uh, lightweight model, let's say, um, but the software has been adapted for, for other applications. So what, what sort of challenges um, do you see this, this sensor addressing in, the, in, you know, in, in markets outside of the, uh, the, the fisheries? Yeah, in marine operation, we, we often meet the, the needs to or uh, monitor the water column or to give uh, evaluation of the, the seabed, so like bathymetry. Uh, and currently, uh, there is no satisfactory solution for all this application. Uh, of course, you can find on the market multiple eco sensor that can build very nice bathymetry but it requires uh, a vessel with skilled people. Uh, you need to travel over the seafloor to get uh, a good asymmetry. Mm. And in some applications, that's not possible, or that's not safe, or it's not convenient enough because you need to do it now and you don't want to hire somebody that comes, etc. Mm. So uh, that's uh, something which is uh, important. Uh, also, uh, another part, you could find acoustic cameras that give very nice picture, like a little bit like photography. But uh, here you don't really build uh, bathymetry, so you don't, you don't get the X, Y, Z, but more like a view of what are the objects on the floor. And also this is high frequency instruments, so you are affected by the turbidity, and in some cases you can't really use them. Okay, okay. So it's a, it's a, a unique tool in a sense, um, and giving you this sort of um, opportunity to do static or, or, or and kind of re real time bathymetry, um, uh, and so in terms of um, applications, what sort of application areas, broadly speaking, uh, do, we, do, we, do we look at? Yeah, you can imagine a lot of applications. We have a bunch of them uh, in mind. Uh, everything where, where you need to control what you're doing on the, on the field and you don't want to ask somebody with a specific tool. So something that can be used by the operator. Or you can imagine all the installation, uh, a permanent installation that gives a report every week, every two weeks, to give an evaluation or the evolution of something which is moving on the floor you are looking at. All these kind of uh, applications are in our mind. It can be from the safety of the operation to the control of the work which is done uh, by the operator. Okay, so... Um so any, any amount of different sort of monitoring or, or inspection type applications, either static, uh, permanent or, or, uh, or temporary uh, installations. And now what we're gonna do now is, is, is have a quick dig into um, some case studies that I know that you want to, uh, to, to focus on. So these are some, uh, let's say, conceptual ideas, but also some real ideas and some real installations. So. Number one, I know that the, the, the number one uh, application that, that you wanted to discuss was about dredging. Um, so let's have a little look at that. 
Yeah, as dredging is a very good uh, example uh, where you could use CPXC and bring the innovative features of CPXC on the field. Uh, we have uh, an example here to, to display, which is an insertion on uh, what we call a backhoe dredger. So these platforms are used to dredge the sediments and to uh, maintain a certain level of uh, depth to this area. Uh, in this installation, we put a CPX uh, just below the crane. It's a little bit tilted forward, so we can manage a good coverage, at least the same or more than the crane operating uh, range. And here the, the purpose is to uh, give a refresh of the bathymetry uh, before the operator moves to the next spot. Uh, today with uh, this kind of uh, platform, uh, that's very complicated for the operator because it's completely blind. Uh, he has already a nice bathymetry which is built by a uh, multi sander. He has a centimetric positioning of the bucket. So it's like uh, playing a Pac-Man game. Uh, he knows where you have to grab the sediment and remove it, but he has no control of what he's doing. So if something is dropping or he missed a, a spot, he has no way to, to know about. So usually what they do, they try to uh, flatten the seabed with the bucket at the end to be uh, more or less sure. So that what we want to do is they want to be very sure before they move to the next spot. And this is why uh, we want to integrate this CPC in this uh, condition. Uh, something we need to, to point out is uh, the software integration is important here. It's not uh, currently uh, existing. Uh, and what we want is uh, to have a one button uh, instrument. So to be integrated in the existing software, where the operator sees the crane, sees the uh, sediment, and then the CPX is used, is used to refresh as uh, the bathymetry in real time. So it knows exactly where uh, there is missing spot and if there is any over specification dredging, this kind of, of work. Okay, that's really interesting. So the idea is this, that, that the sonar will be mounted from the, from the, the barge uh, on a pole, uh, looking forward into the work area, um, and then give uh, you know, the, the operator the opportunity to capture uh, um, the bathymetry in real time, just to check the work, that's, uh, check the progress of the work. Um, the idea being to introduce some efficiency, uh, additional efficiency into the operation. And so the key thing here is it's, you know, the sonar is ready to go, but actually integrating that, that uh, visualization into the, uh, the, the environment of the dredge operation is, is needs, obviously needs some work with, uh, with, the, with the partner uh, to, to, uh, to make that happen. Okay, that's really interesting. Um, so the next case study, again, is, is, is a, a, another river-based um, river uh, inspection uh, job. So this is a, 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 some work that you've done recently on the River Rhone. Maxence, yes, about that. Yes, correct. Uh, we have a lot of requests about fresh waters like lake of river inspection. I can give you an example with a customer we did some demo with. Uh, they are uh, electricity producers. So from the run river flow, they produce electricity. And they have two main challenges and they don't find a good solution for the moment. Uh, the first one is to manage and to control uh, the sediment on the river bed because this sediment will move and we will come closer and closer to the uh, electricity plant. And what they want to avoid is to stop the flow because they, will, uh, they won't uh, produce electricity anymore. So they need to anticipate this and to monitor this. Uh, what they have today is that they hire a vessel with a surveyor to go here every maybe two months or after an event. Uh, so that's not very comfortable for them. So what they are looking at is a, a fix monitoring system so they can see in real time and week after week the evolution of the terrain and then anticipate the dredging operation. The second side, uh, the second application uh, they have, and we'll have a, a small uh, illustration here, is uh, the monitoring of a pump which is used to uh, enable the traffic uh, on the Run River because here you have a, a big dam on the river and you need to ensure the uh, traffic of this uh, run river is quite a big river so with a lot of traffic and uh, this is a state requirement so if they produce electricity from the run river but they need to ensure this uh, flow of uh, vessel and here in the illustration this is also a good example of uh, opportunity uh, installation so they drop the light version of the CPX a little bit tilted like 30 degree tilted so they can see from the surface to a little bit uh, to the pier here you can see the lock on the right part 
And the interesting uh, area is the blue, the dark blue uh, spot where the pump is located. And what they want to uh, monitor is uh, if there is sediments entering because of the flow of water, and that will uh, maybe create a failure in the pump, so they can anticipate and look uh, at this. To give you an idea of this uh, setup, there is about 10 meters uh, water depth. We, have, we are two meters below the water, and uh, the deepest water, the dark blue, is about 40 meters, and the yellow part is six meters. So it's higher than the CPIX, uh, not the CPIX, but higher than the rest of the basimetry. So uh, the uh, largest side is 40 meters, and the smallest is only 20 meters, but because of the shape of, of the floor here. So the, it's preventing the, the beams to reach after the yellow spot here. So that's, uh, that's a quite a good and interesting um, uh, illustration. Uh, maybe a uh, uh, last point about this uh, setup is we have an integrated a built-in uh, IMU inside the uh, acoustic. So when you drop it in the water and you tilt it, it automatically gives you the wall and pitch of your system. So uh, you can have a, a quite a good view of uh, your area without, without any settings. So you can drop it, uh, install it, plug it, and in a click, you will get the bathymetry uh, online. Thanks, Maxon. So in that, in that instance, the, um, the idea is to monitor the the, the, the scouring or the, or the, uh, the, the buildup of sediment around uh, the intake of a pump for the lock on the River Rhone. And, and in this particular instance, you, you arrived with a van with the system in the back of the van. You deployed it on a pole over the side of the quay in order to build up that um, really quick uh, measurement of the, uh, of the situation. Um, could be deployed permanently or in a temporary fashion and very mobile on the, from the side of the river. Um, taking away the need of of, uh, of, of of mobilizing a vessel to that to that location, really interesting. And we've got one more that we want to look at, which is um, it's an installation, a real a real installation on board um, a, a jack up uh, barge um, of Pent Ocean. Um, tell us a bit about that one, Maxence. Yes, actually, this is our first customer, but uh, CPC, so it's uh, a very good uh, example here, and. Uh, in that case, we provide a full solution from the acoustics to the uh, software. So I will explain a little bit later. Uh, just to give you uh, the idea is Pantation is um, building wind farms uh, at sea. So they use big platforms, we call it self-elevating platforms, to transport the turbines and to install it uh, at sea. So usually when they go on the, on the site, they already get a nice bathymetry because they want to be sure that they can install so we form here, but they always want to control when they will uh, put the legs down. Uh, they want to be sure that it's safe. So the safety is what about the flatness? So they want to make sure that the good area where was the previous uh, bathymetry uh, survey uh, was done. Uh, so they want to check if it's good. They want to check if there's new obstacle. So they don't want to uh, damage their foot when uh, laying them. And uh, finally, they want also to see the existing structures. So you can imagine the uh, concrete mattress, which are used to uh, avoid the erosion around the turbines. So they don't want to crush this. Uh, they want to be just as close as possible, but not crush these uh, structures existing. So uh, I have a small uh, um, illustration to, to show you and to explain the setup. First, uh, on your left, uh, you can see that you have not only one or two or three, we have four units used at the same time. And this is also a feature of the CPIX. Uh, you can have what we call the multi-head uh, capability. And from the customer point of view, it's completely transparent. You can have one up to four, and it's exactly the same way to use. The only difference is that when you get the result, you get more spots at a time. On the right side, so on the top view, you have the 3D uh, view, which is in real time also, where you can display uh, mobiles. So on mobiles, I understand the uh, platform itself, but also the legs. So here we have four legs on this platform. And we are integrating also what we call the leg monitoring system that gives the uh, extension of the leg. So in real time, you can see your, pat your platform and your leg uh, deployment. You can display also automatically the uh, bathymetry. 
and the acoustic view. So you can have also the intersection between acoustics, the legs being uh, down or up, and your bass symmetry. So that's a good real-time assessment of your environment. And uh, just below this, you have the 2D view, which is more like a plotter view. Uh, this is good to have, to have a, like an eagle view uh, of your platform, so you can see where you are exactly, and you can integrate IS and other uh, plotter uh, features in this view, and of course, the bathymetry uh, itself. Um, uh, we don't see it here, but we have also real-time value that are given, like what is the distance between my leg and the seafloor just below the leg here. Um, I, I want to point something here. Uh, the CPC is completely new for, for this kind of uh, application. And usually what they do, and it was to use divers. So they send divers just below the four legs. Uh, imagine the size of the legs here. It's not the biggest platform. They, they have other platform in mind. But this platform, the legs, is seven meters by seven meters. So imagine the divers being sent here, trying to check if it's free of obstacle in maybe dark condition. So it takes a lot of time. It's not always very safe. And so they want a more convenient and real-time assessment of what is, uh, what is done. And the operator itself is a leg operator. So it's not a surveyor, it's not a, a sort people. It is really the operator of the leg that manage in real-time the legs and monitor that, okay, everything is okay. I can put my legs uh, on the floor. Excellent, thanks for that, Max. So it's a real installation with four um, four, four CPIC systems integrated within into one, uh, one platform, um, one on each corner, and, and integrated into the same kind of visualization system. And what we were looking at there was obviously just a graphic uh, imagery of, of that installation, but, but then we were looking at real data um, from, from some tests and trials that we've, we've done prior to the, uh, um, you know, the, the putting into operation of the system. Really interesting application. Um, that, that's great, Maxon. So um, we've had a quick look at the, the sonar itself. We've had a, a, a quick snapshot of a number of, of case studies. Um, what we're going to do now is go to questions and answers, Maxon. So I hope you're sitting comfortably. We've got some questions. Um, can CPIC-C be mounted in different orientations? Yes, uh, you don't need to be downward, you can be sideward, forward looking or backward looking. So it's uh, very flexible. You can install it uh, in almost every position, possible position. The only limitation is the depth of the sensor, which is 25 meters. But apart from this, you can orient it this quite freely. Okay, so very flexible, fully flexible uh, orientation. And then uh, within the, the scanning uh, swaths, it's possible to, to point those and uh, point them in the direction you want to to look. Um, so here's one about depth rating. Um, how deep can CPICs be installed? Yeah, so I said it's 25 meters uh, uh, depth rating. Uh, we don't have a uh, subsea version of CPICs currently, and we, we are not working on this, to be completely honest. So we remain on a hull or K or pier installation, but not uh, deeper than 25 meters. OK, sure, that's clear. Um, so looking at river installations, river applications, could CPIC C, uh, would it be able to detect obstacles such as tree trunks? Um, uh, we don't, we don't implement these features. Uh, we are working on uh, object detection, which is more in the military markets. Uh, so today what we could see, you could see the flow. So in the acoustic view, you could see uh, this object. So uh, visually you, could, you would be able to see our various a flow of objects in my water column. Uh, you could maybe, uh, we could also maybe use the, what we call the biomass assessment because we can detect uh, objects in the water, but it's not really like a tracking on an alarm uh, at the moment. Sure. Okay, so the answer is it doesn't do it today, but it, it, you know, technically it's perhaps something that could be uh, adapted if there was a strong interest in doing it. Um, here's one about uh, people, someone thinks CPIX looks a bit heavy. Is it suitable for pole mounting? Yeah, it, it's not only looking, it's a very heavy. It's like a 68 kg for the stainless uh, version. So it's why we also uh, have a light version, which is 24 kg in air, and which is a neutral buoyant uh, in water. So uh, depending on the application, uh, sometimes like you, you saw for the Pentocean, they don't care about 68 kg 
which is permanently installed. But when you're in the Rhone River, you don't want to have this big baby to be uh, uh, transported and installed, so you can use the light version. So it's very uh, dependent on the application and if it's permanent or just a few hours or days at a certain spot. Sure. Yeah, so the standard model is, is heavy and it's rugged eyes for a reason. It's, it's to survive uh, lengthy installations. We have a light model, which is uh, in a, built from a composite material and takes a lot of the weight out of the system. It's 25 kilos or 24 kilos. Yeah. Um, so pole mounting, no problem. Um, temporary mountings. Um, so here's one about uh, environmental performance. So how, how do you manage high levels of turbidity um, and how and and how can you and can you track things or can you operate in harsh environments? Yeah, that's a very a very good point. Uh, actually, the CPX I didn't mention the frequency of the CPX is 150 kilohertz, so it's mm -hmm. quite low compared with other multi beam echo sounder. Uh, so we had a lot of uh, experiments. Uh, I can tell about uh, a river close to the sea where you can have layer of mud which are going up or down depending on the the swell here. And uh, we are managed. We, we can manage to go through this very thick uh, material. So for river, sometimes it's hard to say what is the bottom. Is it uh, this top layer, or is it just after the, the rocks, etc.? But uh, we have a lot of experience about penetrating this thick mud, where yeah. other multiving we just detect the top of these layers. Mm. Yeah. So the frequency being the key to the to the answer there, 150 kilohertz. Um, and so people can hopefully imagine, uh, <clears throat> based on some <clears throat> knowledge and experience, that you know how it will deal with the turbidity. Um, so, what about um, bottom classification? You touched on it a little bit earlier. Maybe just a quick recap on uh, on how we can manage that. Yeah, that's, uh, I think it's important to clarify the what you call classification. When I hear classification, I say I think okay, the instrument can say this is sand, rocks, mud and also all this declination between all these main uh, features. So today we don't have an automatic classification tool, but you have the metrology from the uh, seafloor or the, the bottom, actually. So because the calibrated instruments, uh, you will get a very accurate value of what you call the backscatter, and that can be used to classify uh, the bottom. Something important to know about is a uh, backscatter depends on the incidence angle. So if you're in static position, you only get one angle at a certain location. So it's sometimes you have many or more than one possible sediment at that place because the curve of BS cross at that location. Okay, okay. So, so we uh, backscatter information can be derived from the, from, the, uh, from the data, but we don't actually have a an implementation of that in the standard product um, today. Yeah. Well, what I can uh, add maybe is uh, we, we already have a map also of the backscatter, so you can have the map of the bathymetry, and we can have uh, um, uh, a map also on this bathymetry with the backscatter value. So if you have difference of sediment, you will see the pattern, the shape of it. So uh, you can imagine, okay, I see the different pattern and have a real life assessment to have maybe divers or ROV to assess what is the uh, features here. And when you are in a certain location, you know what are the possible sediments. So that's also a way to uh, simplify the classification, but it's not automatic today. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, good. that's clear. Um, so we've got a question here now about, um, yeah, just, we, we touched a little bit on the frequency earlier, but there's a question about, you know, what's the range, the number of beams, resolution. Give us a quick overview of that yeah. if you could. Okay, so for range, uh, I can give you uh, some ideas with uh, See fishery market, sometimes we can hit the ground at more than 600 meters. So it's more than enough for the uh, CPIC C application. So it's also based on the low frequency. It's there's less loss in the water uh, due to the low frequency of the system. The resolution is very important. Uh, it's uh, each beams are 1.6 degree per 1.6 degree resolution. So it means you can't see two objectives are within this beam. And in terms of range resolution, uh, we reach 7.5 centimeter resolution. Okay, that's helpful. So 150 kilohertz, 7.5 centimeter uh, range resolution, and 1.6 by 1.6. Yeah. Um, we've got one here about um, cable laying. So is it, do you consider that the, 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 there could be uh, some way of using this tool in touchdown monitoring of cables or cable laying operation? 
Uh, you know, it's uh, one of the many one we have in the basket. So we, we are still thinking about uh, developing CPXC for more than the three uh, applications we already state uh, here. And cable laying is uh, among them. Uh, why is that? Is because the volumetric capability of the CPX. So you can uh, imagine having a CPX uh, installed at the back of the vessel, a little bit tilted, and having this 120 per 120 degree uh, conic aperture. So uh, we think uh, we could detect the cable and that we could detect the shape of the cable and maybe uh, determine the, be the, the bending radius, uh, the incidence angle, and also build the bathymetry in front of this cable to see uh, how it's, uh, it's happening. Uh, but to be clear today, it's not an existing solution. So we are more in the phase that we want to, uh, to find a partner, uh, maybe an uh, end user or operator that uh, are in this uh, field to deploy maybe a demo um, system and to test on the real life uh, condition to see uh, is it possible and uh, what's the next move is physically possible, uh, what's the next move to have a, a nice application because we want something which is more or less uh, also uh, uh, automatic and user-friendly. Sure, okay, so the, the, the short answer is we think it's a very interesting application. Um, there needs to be some software adaptation and, uh, and the idea would make a, a really efficient solution would be integrated in a, a customer's operation. Um, so here's another one. What about um, long-term environmental monitoring applications? So somebody's thinking about biomass biomass monitoring in wind farms, for example? Yeah, I have a, a nice example. Uh, we got another in Turkey for a European project, which is a monitoring of uh, the transit of biomass from the uh, uh, Black Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. So it's around the uh, Istanbul uh, area. So there's six uh, independent boy, uh, autonomous boy, so working with uh, uh, sun uh, electricity and that monitors the uh, amount of fishes at a different time and uh, period of the year. And uh, actually that's a good example of how CPC can be uh, integrated in a different uh, platform. Here we only have the SAU and uh, an automatic BFU that runs script when it is started. So it's monitor, run a script, save the raw data that will be recovered later and stream in real time uh, pre-processed data to the shore. So in real time, uh, as you can see at this different spot, what were the biomass uh, located and shape and uh, energy inside. Okay, so the answer is yes. Very well suited to that sort of application um, for permanent installation and can be integrated with a, you know, a, a, an operating system to, to, to define what, it's, what it should do and, and, and manage data and, and data transmission and so on. Um, here's one, somebody wants a demo. Can a demo be organized on a barge? Ah, yes, uh, with pleasure. We already have some already planned. For example, in September, we'll have one with a customer, which is ODF, very important in France here. We uh, are interested in the dam monitoring. We may have, depending on the lockdown period, uh, one in uh, July or August for a very uh, Nice one, which is uh, for the uh, nuclear plant, they want to prevent the biomass to entering the water intake. So they want to monitor uh, around this water intake if there is biomass to avoid having uh, them into the, the pipes. Mm -hmm. So yes, the answer is yes, we have one unit currently. And in a few weeks, we get a second unit. Both of them, they are light version. So it's easy to deploy. Uh, you don't need to have big um, structure uh, to to hold the CPIX. Yeah, sure. Okay, so yeah, we're, we're, we're ready and willing to, to come and demonstrate uh, the system at a customer site or, or even uh, we're doing demos frequently down at our facility in, in La Ciota in the south of France. Yeah. Um, so there's one about data formats. Can CPIX C um, operate with kind of open data formats? Yeah, actually at XBlue it's more or less the thinking we have, we like open formats. Uh, we like to be integrated to different uh, software. It has already been uh, done with uh, OLAC software, EcoView for the biomass assessment, uh, Caris when we do some hydrography um, and all this stuff. So we have two ways to do so. Uh, we can record raw data and have converters and we can have real time stream from the BFU, which is a 
let's say, the, the black box of the system that can stream uh, process data in a certain format. It can be open format, but also proprietary format. So that's uh, all options are possible with the CPX, and that's quite easy to implement because the structure is already here with a certain number of existing uh, formats. Okay, and that leads on to the, an, another question actually, which is how, how would CPX C be interfaced with other software? You touched on that a little bit there, but maybe you can just go through the, the components of the system just to. Yeah, so the, uh, it's, uh, to, to be very quick, we have uh, the antenna, the first unit, which is more or less uh, a power supply. Then what we call the BFU, which is the most important one that does all the processing, all the stream in and out of the system and the operating system of the customer that can be uh, customized. Uh, on the BFU, we can integrate serial ports or Ethernet ports. It could be UDP, TCP, uh, server or client. So we can define the different stream uh, we want. And to interface and to have more uh, control on the CPX, there is already an existing protocol. So uh, somebody that can create a module that can directly ask to CPX, do this or do this scenario and uh, send me this data. So this is already implemented uh, tools, so like a little bit like a SDK uh, part of the CPX. Okay, yeah, so it's, so it's, uh, it's adapted for integration with other systems and, and software. Um, here's one about um, another application. So does C, or can CPIX C detect gas bubbles coming from the seabed? Is it, yeah. is it possible to determine the amount of gas? <clears throat> Uh, uh, let's, uh, that's also the first part. Yes, we did very interesting one in uh, uh, Garonne River, I think it was, uh, where you have some gas uh, leak from pipes. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, we could detect bubbles uh, smaller than the uh, optical detectable bubbles. Uh, why is that? This bubble is it's a high reflection with the acoustic. You see, it's a quite, uh, it will uh, transform your uh, your sound and reflect it very easily to you. So yes, we have a lot of uh, experience with that. We followed a pipe and you could see some uh, some plumes here and uh, it was very easy to detect it. To determine the size, I would say we could, we could use the uh, metrology about this because each bubble acts like uh, an object. So depending on the size, the answers, the acoustic answer will be different. So there's some uh, rules like physical rules, if it's a, a spherical bubble, you know that the diameter will give this TS value, for instance. So there is a certain way to come back to the size of the bubbles. Of course, if you have a mix of bubbles, you have like a spread uh, histogram of uh, this, and then you have to determine like more the um, statistics about the bubbles uh, dispersion. Mm. Okay, well, that's really interesting. So the answer is yes, and uh, yes, and yes. Um, we can definitely detect bubbles and, and there could be, we could certainly adapt a way to, to make some uh, measurements, estimates of the amount of gas or either, either with, um, yeah, but that would need a bit of work to, to study the, uh, the, the, you know, the formula. Um, I think that's it for, I think that's it for questions. Oh, no, no, we've got one more. Hang on. Stand by, Maxons. Stand by. Yeah, yeah. I'm not even. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's about um, hydrography, um, and so uh, yeah, is is yes. Can CPIX be used in hydrographic operations? Um, you know, to deliver data for for, for charting, IHO um, charting. Yeah, it, it can be used. As I said, there is an integrated IMU, but so if you use integrated IMU, you will be like a, a order one A with IHO. But you can integrate with a uh, nice uh, motion sensor like uh, eye drains, for instance, and then you can uh, reach the special order. I choose special order. So this is, this is possible. I won't say it's a main application of CPIX because you can find multi beam ecosystem on this market, but it's possible to, to operate the CPIX and get the uh, IHO uh, results. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it, it's feasible. It's not the, let's say, the main goal of the, of the, of the tool, but the, uh, it, it, it it, it can reach a certain level of, of performance with the built-in uh, motion sensor, but if you integrate it with a higher, a higher spec sensor, then um, then you can get a special order um, IHO uh, bathymetry output. Um, there's another one. Um, does does the built-in motion sensor include heading? No, it it doesn't. Uh, so you need to have a 
So, or you don't need it. For instance, if I take the river example, actually the heading is quite easy to understand. So you don't really need to have the, have the value and you can enter um, an absolute value and to get the, the right um, uh, location of your spot. Mm. Uh, but if you want to be on board a vessel or motion uh, platform, uh, you will need the heading as an input to the system. So you only get with your army the raw pitch and also assessment of the heave value. Okay, yeah. So um, in the static operation, it's obviously a kind of a relative bathymetry type observation. If you want to go to something more sophisticated and get, um, you know, real world coordinates for your soundings, then you need to orient the, uh, the, 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 the array in, uh, in the real world. So you'd need a, a heading input of some sort. Um, any more questions? Is that it? Any more questions? I think, I think we're done. Yeah. Maxence, that is the end. Thank you very much for your help. Thanks for the answers to those questions. Thank you, David, for the, for the pleasure. I uh, just want to say a few words about everybody. Just stay safe. I hope the lockdown period will, uh, will end soon, but uh, we don't know. So we keep here available to all your questions. You can ask for your commercial contact, or you can find my, uh, my uh, coordinates on the CPXC website, you, you will find a link uh, shortly after this uh, webinar. And also a big thanks to uh, IT people, to you, David, to organize this webinar, to transform this lockdown period, not very fun, to uh, an opportunity to demonstrate our, our product and to, to give you some clue of what are the progress with the, with the system. And a last word to all people keeping uh, uh, working at x and delivering system uh, every day. So that's, uh, we managed to do it, and that's a uh, big thanks to, to all these guys uh, here at uh, Hilgo. Thanks, Max Sols. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, well, that's it for us um, for today. Um, we will be repeating this exercise later in the day, but hopefully you've got a, a, an idea of, um, of CPIC-C 3D solid state bathymetry tool. Um, Hopefully you've had your questions answered. If you've got any more questions, then don't hesitate to contact us. If you want to see a, or imagine a, a, an idea to have a demonstration of the system in, in real life, then please, please let us know because we're ready to, uh, to demonstrate it. Uh, and in the meantime, before we can start traveling again, maybe there's an opportunity to, to demonstrate remotely some of the software uh, um, applications that we can show you. Um, so, as I said earlier, this recording, or recording of this will be available on our website later, um, and I think the FAQ, so all the questions and answers, should also be available there. Um, so, we, as I say, will be repeating this, this uh, webinar later this, today, French time. Um, stay tuned for news of future um, XLive events. There will be some coming up in the not too distant future. Um, in the meantime, um, stay safe and goodbye from here, us here in Paris. Bye.